Hello and welcome back to Higher Ideas Podcast. Today I had the pleasure of uh, recording a really good podcast conversation with another podcaster named Tom Butler, and he was kind enough to approach me and ask if I would like to be on his show, sort of, to help plug my new little podcast here, and also just uh, because he seemed to really appreciate uh, what I've put up so far. So on many levels, this was awesome. And uh, it was kind of cool to get to know another American friend, because I haven't had many, to be honest. Up here in Canada, I haven't had the chance to have run-ins at length with many Americans. And it was a good chat. And sort of in honor of that, and sort of in a spin-off on something we touched upon when we spoke, I wanted to tell you a story about another American friend of mine, actually my first American friend. This was uh, quite a few years ago. I was living in another city, and uh, I was trying to meet people. And through those efforts, I met a guy that was a little bit younger than me. And it turns out he was a student from the US. And I sort of kept this in the back of my mind as we uh, started talking online. And very quickly, I realized that every sort of hot-button topic that was brought up in conversation, any issue that had two sides for or against out there in society, uh, every time those came up, he would immediately gravitate to one of the two extreme points of view, and he would immediately start spitting attacks at those who have the opposite point of view. And this sort of confused me, maybe as a Canadian boy, or maybe just as a guy who tends to try and see all angles, but sort of uh, became a very apparent pattern with him that I wanted to deal with. But how to deal with it? Well, I thought a little bit about it and decided I would start preaching the middle. Because if I would take the opposite side, then I'd become an enemy, and nothing gets done. He won't budge. And if I take his side, well, again, he won't budge, because he'll have found another ally in his camp. So just as a sort of interesting experiment, I guess, I started preaching the center on every single issue. Even if I was on one extreme or the other, I would preach to the center. And this would really frustrate him. The fact that I was not assuming a side, I could tell was frustrating him when we'd have these discussions, and he would always storm off. Uh, he'd always uh, you know, log off and seem to almost erase me from his friends list and uh, you know, goodbye forever sort of uh, huffy exit. And then I would just let him go, and I would go about my life. And maybe a month later, he'd just pop up again. Hey, man, how's it going? Just back again, eh? Okay. And I'd keep having conversations with him. And this went on. He would get into another black or white view, and I would preach gray. And then he'd storm off. And this went on for some months. And it became quite a a pattern in itself, him leaving and him coming back. And uh, one day, he wanted to meet. I, of course, obliged. We we had been talking for a while, and uh, maybe we can have some more lively discussions in person. And so we met, and at some point in the conversation, he suddenly sort of awkwardly said, uh, Hey, uh, I've been meaning to say something. I've been meaning to thank you. And I had no idea what he was talking about. Thank me for what? And then he continued to say that... Through our conversations, yes, he would get frustrated. He admitted this. He would get frustrated and storm off. But he said he would always go off and think about what I said. He couldn't help but process it because of the way I guess it was presented in a palatable, gray fashion that wasn't offensive. While doing this, he says he realized finally that he had been raised in a system that only showed him black or white, or red versus blue, my team versus your team extreme versus extreme. And he says that through knowing me and talking to me and hearing gray constantly out of my mouth, he realized that he had forgotten that gray exists. It seemed like he was talking about having had some sort of awakening to a wider awareness of the world and and the nuances of life. And this was mind-blowing. I had no idea this was coming. I was so honored, I guess, is the word. So of course, you're welcome. 
I, I, I guess I thought that might happen, but it wasn't really a plan. <laughs> and it was amazing to see. I changed a life. And he went on to say that he actually felt sad for his friends who were still in America because he realized through pondering why he had been that way that the only way to escape it was to leave that environment, leave his country. Only by coming to Canada and meeting a Canadian that preaches gray did he come to see the cage that he just left. And so I hope he was able to get his friends out of the country and I hope he was able to continue to preach gray to his friends in the same way I did with him and maybe change them. But these are the way we change each other's lives when we speak. When we speak respectfully and when we speak with progress in mind. And that's a little seed of what motivates me. That was one of the very first times that I realized the power of what I have to say. And the power of what you have to say. And I make no false pretense that I'm doing this right now with you. The entire point of this podcast is to prompt you to grow. Everyone listening, I don't care who you are or what level you're at. I'm going to slowly ramp up the juice here and hopefully grab a little bit of everybody and bring everyone just a little bit higher. And that's why this is called Higher Ideas. So, nice little story from my past that I do enjoy reminiscing about. And I hope you'll join me again next time.